Today, we're going to see if you can still play games using only Intel Iris XE graphics on a laptop from 2020. Integrated graphics has come a long way, with the latest Radeon 890M being considered the most powerful iGPU currently available. But how does the Intel Iris XE graphics on an i7 from a few years ago hold up today? I bought this laptop in 2022 for university. I wanted something that can handle light gaming and productivity and still have a nice screen for game streaming. So this laptop does have the star of the show, the i7 1165G7. And this version of Intel Iris XE graphics has 96 execution units. So it's gonna be a little bit stronger than something like an 1135G7 that only has 80 execution units. For RAM, we have 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X clocked at 4,266 megahertz and everything's running on a one terabyte NVMe SSD. SSD. So let's test some gaming performance and see if you can actually have any fun with the Intel Iris XE graphics. Rainbow Six Siege is an esports title optimized for low-end hardware. At low settings we're averaging 67 FPS at 1080p which is super playable. I didn't experience any stuttering and actually had a really fun time. Oh and for all the tests in this video I'm using an external 1080p capture card so there's no performance impact in game. You can expect similar results with your own hardware. It's my first capture card and for just 40 bucks it served me really well. Playing Siege at 720p will get you a bit closer to 75 FPS average I'm sure. I do have a 75Hz monitor and I notice it is a nice bump in smoothness over generic 60Hz. While Counter-Strike 2 is harder to run than its predecessor, it's still an esports title optimized for a wide range of hardware, and my experience with the 1165G7 and the Iris XE graphics was a bit mixed. At 1080p with a combination of medium settings and FSR balanced, I averaged around 60 FPS, so the gameplay was playable, but obviously not my preference for a competitive shooter. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the performance metrics to show or record properly, so I don't have exact results, but if you're serious about playing CS2 on this kind of hardware, Dropping to the lowest settings in 720p is probably your best bet. If you're just playing casually, this level of performance is fine, but for ranked matches, you'll probably want a smoother experience. I was looking forward to test Marvel Rivals, but unfortunately I got this error saying that my system isn't compatible with DirectX 12. But from my research, I'm pretty sure the 1165G7 is compatible with DirectX 12. I had all my drivers updated and Windows up to date too, so I'm not really sure what the issue is, but I might have to take a look again in a future video. Ah, battle bits. You had so much potential and you just had to go and blow it. With over a year since the last update, the devs have pretty much abandoned this awesome game. At 1080p with the potato graphics though, we've reached a very nice 103.3 FPS average, with a max all the way up to 127.2. It was so smooth I decided to play it with medium settings where we got an average of 70.4 FPS. Playing on this 128 player server was way smoother than expected, and this game runs very well overall. It's basically Battlefield with low graphics. I love the gunplay, weapon progression, proximity chat, and god I just miss the times when the servers were full of players. It was such a fun game. Valorant is another esports title that runs surprisingly well. At 1080p with the lowest settings we got an average of 106.3 FPS with a max of 153.3. This is in gaming monitor territory now, and any monitor with 100Hz or more would be a huge step up compared to 60Hz ones. And even for just 110 USD, you could get a 165Hz 1080p monitor that will utilize these high frame rates and still give you space to grow when you get a stronger PC. Plenty of people I know rock monitors like this, and you don't need anything crazy for high FPS gaming anyways. It's better to put that money towards your PC or back in your wallet. Rocket League is another lightweight game that I think is a perfect fit for the Iris XE graphics. You'll have to excuse my gameplay here, as despite no lifing the game with over 1100 hours, I haven't played this past year, so I'm pretty rusty at it. At 1080p with quality render settings, we reached 87 FPS on average, with a max of 105.7. Again, Intel's integrated graphics surprise me with how well the game runs. I think the casual esports gamer doesn't even need any expensive parts to get going. And even if we turn the render details to performance, we could get a nice boost to the FPS, so we could take advantage of a higher refresh rate. One of the best roguelikes out there, if not the best, Risk of Rain 2 is a fantastic game that performs very nicely on the 1165G7 and its Iris XE graphics. Even in the late game with tons of enemies and effects on screen, on average at 1080p with the lowest settings we got 48.8 FPS, although there were minor hiccups at some points with the 1% low reaching 13.5. 
I didn't really notice this and it wasn't impactful during my testing. It was so much fun actually that I played this for nearly two hours before I realized that I should probably move on to the next game. This is definitely another title that would play great for budget gamers. Before we check out single player games with better graphics, I wanted to see if the IRSXE graphics could handle an FPS shooter that's a bit more demanding. Apex Legends. At 720p with the lowest settings, we got 47.8 FPS average, but with a 1% low of 10.1. While these lowest settings do make it playable, it was definitely tougher than I'm used to, but at least there weren't any issues for majority of the time I was playing. It's pretty hard to be competitive with such a low average FPS. I think this laptop is definitely better suited for different games, but this laptop still has more potential, and I saved the best for last. I think one of the best use cases for gaming with Iris XE graphics is playing older AAA games. Here's Tomb Raider from 2013 at 1080p with high settings, and we got an average of 59.9 FPS with a max of 74. There's hundreds if not thousands of great games that this laptop could run smoothly. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on budget benchmarks on laptops, GPUs, mini PCs, and more. I even tested the next title in the franchise, Rise of the Tomb Raider, from 2015, and at 1080p with low settings, we got an overall average of 31.97. This is the only Tomb Raider game that I've beaten so far, and I think you could still have fun with Intel integrated graphics. I also did the benchmark for the most recent game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and we got a respectable 30 FPS average with low settings at 1080p. There are more options for customizing graphics in the settings if you want to try for a higher FPS, and it does look visually better than the previous titles. But what if I told you we could play at max settings? Well, we can. And now, we'll take a look at doing just that with Moonlight Game Streaming. So Moonlight is kind of like Steam Link if you're familiar with that, but it's a lot better. Here we're playing at 4K max settings on my gaming PC and sending a 1440p stream to the laptop. You basically connect the desktop to let it do all the work while it feels like you're playing locally on your laptop. But now we can see the performance is much better. And the input delay isn't bad either, as I can play a fast-paced game like Call of Duty Black Ops 6 with no issues. The cool thing about Moonlight is that we can even stream at 120Hz, which works great on phones and portable monitors with 120Hz displays. I have a Backbone phone controller that lets me comfortably play desktop games from bed at 120Hz ultra settings, and I also have a portable 120Hz 2K monitor that would pair super well with this laptop. While this only works well on your local network, there are ways you could open it up to connect from anywhere in the world, and this makes a phone controller or a portable monitor a killer portable gaming setup. I wanted to throw in some 3D Mark tests as well because I think the 1165 G7 is still a great value for the performance you get. This is the chip I use to edit my videos and work on thumbnails when I'm out and about. I plan to make a future video testing productivity and AI on my devices, so watch out for that. So can you still game with Intel Iris XE graphics from 2020? I'd say yes, you most certainly can but with some limitations. Most esports games run great at 1080p, with some like Valorant, Rocket League, and BattleBit Remastered running exceptionally well, breaking 100 FPS and opening up the possibility for high refresh rate gaming. More demanding games like Apex Legends, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider still prove to be a challenge. For anything beyond this, or if your average FPS is below 30, a dedicated GPU is probably your best bet. Give a sub to the channel to stay up to date for when I test my GTX 1660 and 1660 Super. The Iris XE graphics is still very capable though, and it continues to serve me well with Moonlight game streaming and video editing on my laptop's beautiful 1440p screen. Since I'm upgrading my desktop to the new AM5 parts, I may or may not make a budget build video using my old ones, so let me know if that's something you would be interested in in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this, subscribe and check out my last video where I took a look at the 7900 XT and how it performs in recent games.